let's talk about intermittent fasting. Um, what are the benefits? There's data that it lowers, um, and this uh, comes not just from MS literature, but many different chronic conditions, but generally it reduces inflammation. It protects the brain and the central nervous system. It reduces stress on your cellular environment and it can result in weight loss. Now there's a lot of other benefits, but I'm just naming a few. Um, blood um, sugar sensitivity improves. So, so actually insulin sensitivity improves, which means you can pull blood sugar out more efficiently out of the blood and into cells. Blood pressure can improve. Your gut starts to move better. So for example, constipation improves. And you know these points here on the second bullet are actually really um, important for overall health. As I said, intermittent fasting requires calorie restriction, and there's many different ways to do it, but I'm going to present two different regimens to you. There's You can either do alternate day fasting, where you're 24 hours on, 24 hours off, so you can have a normal day today, and then you fast for 24 hours, and then you have another normal day, and so on. This is not where I would have you start. This is a big jump. Um, but there's also the 5-2 plan. And this is actually much more doable. So any five days of the week, you eat your normal diet, no calorie restriction needed. Any two non-consecutive days, so you don't want to do two days next to each other, you have to have them separated by a day in between at least, you are either doing a 24-hour fast or you can eat, but you're cutting down your calories by about a by about two thirds. So about 600 calories for men, 500 for women. This is actually easier to do than the alternate day. And so, um, and, and you can pick which two days of the week you do the either full restriction of no food for 24 hours or you're restricting calories down. Let me show you some of the data. Here's a mouse study. Mice are like people, sort of. And, you know, nutrition studies are hard to do in humans. And um, so we use the mouse model to help us see what can happen when we do an intervention. So um, what happened was they fed the, the mouse model of MS, they're called EAE mice. So basically they inject them with something. Several weeks later, the mice develop a um, a, uh, a condition that's demyelinating that looks like MS. And so what they did here was they fed the mice every other day for four weeks and looked to see what happened. They ended up seeing that in the gut microbiome, so in the large intestine of the mice, the diversity of good bacteria increased. That's a good thing. And the microbiome, you know, plays a really important role in everything, the immune function, nervous system function, mood. And so just by doing this every other day fasting, they got to see more diverse my, uh, gut microbiome. They saw favorable changes in T cells and T cells do play a role in MS. So they saw certain populations pop up that are more favorable for um, improving MS symptoms in these mice. They also saw um, more favorable cytokines being um, uh, secreted because um, cytokines are communication molecules of the immune system. And so they're now seeing more favorable cells and communication molecules showing up just by this act of eating every other day. And then what they did was they um, took these mice that were eating every other day, took a sample from their microbiome and put it um, into mice that had this MS-like condition. And um, it actually slowed the progression of MS in these mice. Okay, so what this tells us is that you do an intervention of fasting, the microbiome changes to a favorable state. And if you can take that and put it into mice with MS, the MS improves. Okay, now we can't easily um, take this and extrapolate it to human data, but this is really, um, you know, important. Um, and it's, uh, it's maybe a sign that this could also happen in humans. 
Um, and, and I have to say, we do have some data that it, the gut microbiome improves in people with MS with intermittent fasting, but the data is not that strong. And before you know, we get too far into this, I have to tell you, our fasting data for MS isn't very strong. So I'm just pulling what's out there in the literature and just showing it to you. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about how to, in the end, come up with how you're gonna fast. Here's another um, study on intermittent fasting in MS patients. And um, what they found was, um, well, they, what they did was they had three groups. They either had people restrict their calories um, by 22% every day. So every day they had to eat less. The second group um, had to, drop their calorie intake by 75% just two days a week. So they were doing the 5-2 plan. And then the third group didn't have to ca restrict calories at all. They were the group. And then they compared what happened with these three groups after eight weeks. So here's what they found. CR stands for calorie restriction. So um, the two groups that either restricted calories every day a week showed these patients reported improvements in their well-being and depression scores compared to the people who just ate a normal um, diet every day. And um, these were statistically significant. So there's ways that they can determine whether or not these findings are by chance or no, they're actually st statistically significant. And um, these were real results found with the people who were doing calorie restriction, whether it was the daily or the two times a week. Um, there was weight loss with both of the groups that restricted calories, and the people who restricted their calories every day lost more weight. And what they found was people who did the daily calorie restriction versus the people who did it five, two days a week actually were able to stick to the program better. So that's just what they found in this study. I don't know that that actually translates to real life, but that's what this study showed. Okay, moving on to the second group of, or the second type regimen of um, fasts, the fasting mimicking diet. This one does require calorie restriction. There's many different ways to do it. Um, there's the one, there's a, Basically, the one that we that we have data on a lot in humans actually um, is you do five days consecutive five days of a plant based diet. Now that doesn't mean you have to become a vegetarian, but you're eating mostly plants. So five days of a plant based diet, but at reduced calories, about half of what you normally eat every day. You do that five days in a row, and then the other twenty five days of the month, no calorie restriction. You just do eat your healthy plant based diet. And if you can get three to six cycles in, in a year, that goes a long way. You don't even have to do this every month. And one cycle is five consecutive days followed by 25 days of not fasting um, and not restricting calories. And so this is actually sustainable. I do know people who do this, um, but it, again, I don't think it's the entry point into fasting, um, but, it, but it's something you can work up to. Data outside of just MS shows us that this results in weight loss, cholesterol um, panels improve, blood sugar improves, inflammation and autoimmunity improve. Um, actually, there's some data for MS. And this is actually a strategy used to live longer. Okay. How, how, is, how is this helping you live longer? Well, you are healthier at a cellular level. Remember, you're doing more autophagy and you're... Um, uh, you're pulling out the older dysfunctional cells and making room for new cells to come in. So you're becoming a healthier and newer you. And so here's um, a, a study in mice that showed um, that they did, they did um, the fasting mimicking diet for three days. Um, they didn't do the five days and then 25 days. They just did it for, for three days. Um, where they restricted their calories down to about half. And they actually saw that MS symptoms in these mice improved and there was less demyelination. That's pretty cool, right? It actually gave the immune system and the nervous system the opportunity to do some repair. And um, what they found was they were also able to measure more favorable chemical messengers, cytokines, and more favorable immune cells pulling into the central nervous system just by the act 
of cutting calories down for three days in mice. So they concluded that um, fasting mimicking diet um, in these EAE mice suppressed autoimmunity and inflammation and also promoted remyelination and recovery of tissues, okay? This makes me feel excited. Again, it's a mouse study. We can't easily uh, extrapolate this to humans, but it's an important finding. And it's just going to take more time to really kind of hash this out in, in human populations. And then here's another study on fasting mimicking diets that showed um, a, that in a group of mice that, that um, ended up getting injected with a, a protein and ended up developing an MS-like condition. Um, what they did was they, once they started seeing signs of demyelination and symptoms like MS, they, um, for three days in a row, um, cut the calories down to a third of what they would normally eat. And then this was followed by um, four normal days, and they did two cycles of this. Okay, so just two cycles of cutting calories down by two thirds. And so they're only eating a third of what they normally eat and then just four days of normal and then going back and doing it again. So what they found was this decreased the severity of symptoms. Um, there was um, less infiltration of unwanted cells in the spinal cord and there was less CNS demyelination. Right? So it's almost slowing things down and interrupting that autoimmune process. And some of these CD4 cells um, that can cause inflammation were also coming down in numbers. Also, what they found was um, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is protective for the brain, these levels increased and they saw more um, molecules that were indicative, indicative of remyelination, 